previously on Funny Science Fiction. I had right. no idea where Star Wars was going to go. So they, they just brought back Satan, I guess? Space Satan? The Emperor? Space like Satan. So Satan, <laughs> was, Satan was the guy. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Funny Science Fiction Podcast. The podcast where Darth Vader cutting off Luke's hand isn't the worst dad joke ever. So our guest today is the wonderful actress. Her name is Julie Dolan. Now, you know her voice if you have watched Star Wars Rebels, you've played any Star Wars video games, Final Fantasy games. You probably even know her from another show called The Gilmore Girls, which my daughter knows her from and was like, hey, I know her. So welcome to the show, Julie. We're very happy to have you here today. I am happy to be here. Thank you. You did your homework. We try. You know, we're, we, you know, we have to keep up with the nerd motto and, you know, usually nerds are pretty well educated on things. And so we try to be educated. That's true. Yes. Heavy yes. on the ish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so, it's great to be here. Yeah. We're glad to have you. So we're, we come from a sci-fi page on, on Facebook with a, a very large sci-fi group where we're at about 108,000 followers on the group page right now uh, that listens to our show. And many of them are Star Wars fans, just like me. So I have a, I have a, we're going to start right off the bat with a Star Wars question. Okay. How did you prepare to step into an iconic role like Princess Leia? And what did it mean to you to be involved with that level of a character? My first Leia job was not Rebels. Okay. My first, my first Leia job was if you ever go to Disneyland or Disney World and you go on the Star Tours ride, and if you happen to get the hologram of Leia, talking to the star speeders in the ride that's my voice that was you that was my first audition or the first job that i booked for leia awesome. and that will that will outlive me you know i mean that'll be there forever right yeah um, and so how i auditioned for that was it, it just you know i have a, a voiceover agent and i do animation and i do commercials and audiobooks and she said to me, called me up and said, hey, can you sound like Princess Leia? Now, granted, I saw the movie back in 1977 when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I'm not a nerd like that where I followed every single movie and followed all that sure. kind of, um, I'm a dork, but I'm not a nerd in that sense. <laughs> so I did, I did see the three first three movies and then I kind of went yeah not my thing um I grew up I grew up as a dancer so I was tap dancer jazz ballet musicals were my thing I mean singing in the rain was my favorite movie and okay. I danced with Gene Kelly and Ann Miller and all the old school hoofers oh, that's so awesome. that's that's where my focus was growing up is watching all the musicals and then of course I did musicals when I was younger and and then on the flip side, I liked horror films. I mean, I saw The Exorcist 11 times. I, I, I was a fandom of horror films. Okay. So science fiction and space kind of stuff didn't really fit in. If I had my choice, rather than go future in the space, I would rather go backwards in time. Mm. That's where my kind of entertainment lies. Or, okay. Or, you know. So when I got this audition, I was like, Oh man, I better I better do my homework. And they sent me the Obi Wan Kenobi speech, the General Kenobi. Oh, Years yeah. ago, you served my father in the Clone Wars, and they wanted me to sound just like that. So I would play her the law, the, the the speech, and I would talk along with it. And I would go, Oh, my voice is too high. Okay, I got to lower my voice a little bit. Oh, she's got that kind of weird accent, and she's got to get that in there. And I've had to match the rhythm, the emotion, the, yeah. the, the way she's, the gait, the way she's, the, her speed, everything. Yeah, absolutely. And, and then you take away the training wheels and you have to do it on your own. It's easy <laughs> when you're doing it with her because right. you can kind of fall into that rhythm. Mm. Um, I did the same thing for Barbara Streisand. I voiced Barbara Streisand in a movie. I don't sound like Barbara Streisand, but they, <laughs> they let me, they, they heard something in my voice that was like, you could. So they gave me the scene and I, you know, did the same thing. And eventually I walked out of the studio sounding like Barbara Streisand. So anyway, I'm, I sent my audition in. Uh, I, I did it as best I could. My husband coached me on it and said, you know, a little bit lower here, a little bit faster here. 
and we sent it in. I didn't hear anything for a couple of weeks. And then my agent called and said, you have a callback. Now in voiceover, you don't like, you don't really have callbacks. Like on camera, you have callbacks and callbacks, but I've never known to, known to have a lot of callbacks on voiceover. Maybe for big things like this, they would rather bring in a couple of people. So sure. it was me and two other girls and we went into Disney Imagineering over in Burbank. It's a studio over in Burbank. And they brought in a vocal coach, uh, Eliza Jane Schneider. Um, she does accents. And they wanted to get that slight English accent. She also mm -hmm. coaches actors. So she coached me on just the emotion and what I, what I uh, am going, you know, what I'm saying. Cause I didn't, I had no idea what this was for. You, you, they don't tell you anything. Right. So I get to the studio and I'm like, Star Speeder, wh uh, what am I, what am I saying? They, <laughs> they, so she had to kind of coach me through what I was saying without telling me what the project was. So uh, I was in this big, beautiful studio in Disney and I was in, they, they had a hologram of Leia right in front of me so I could kind of relate to the character. So I knew, you know, you could look at who you were supposed to portray. Okay. And I did, we did it a couple of times. The director directed me a couple of times and then I stepped out of the studio and they said, look, and I turn around and the, uh, they had a screen and they had the same hologram and she was talking. It was Leia talking, doing the um, Obi-Wan Kenobi speech, but my voice was coming out of her mouth saying what I just recorded and her mouth was manipulated to look like what I was saying. It's almost like they oh, took my cool. mouth and they, 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 they almost did that. They almost wanted to take the person's mouth and put it there, but they were able to, they're Disney is magic. I mean, they're, they just, mm -hmm. they're so magical. So they were able to manipulate the mouth to make it look like, change the words. And I looked at it and I said, is, is that me? Or is that, is that Carrie Fisher? They went, no, that's just what you recorded. <laughs> wow. That's when I realized, wow, I, it, with coaching, I, it really made a difference mm. in, in allowing, but, but I still, I have a little bit of her voice anyway, in my natural speaking voice. Yeah. So that helped. So then I left and there was two other girls that I guess auditioned and did the same thing. And then I got the call that I booked the job. So I went back into the studio and we did the exact same thing. And it was only a week and a half later. So it still was in my body. I, I just, I could call it up and, and do the speech and it was no problem. So I was in there a couple of hours. Okay. Three weeks later, I get a call you have to come back in and do it again. And of course, as an actor, you're like, oh God, I suck. What did I do wrong? What do they want? Why didn't they tell me then? What do I do? So it, it, apparently it was a, a mic placement. They wanted it to sound more like a hologram and they couldn't get the special effects or the post to do it. So they just placed the microphone in a different place. And I just did the mm -hmm. whole thing all over again. And, and I recalled it like that. So it, was, it wasn't that long later. So cool. it, it was no problem. And then we waited. And <laughs> I couldn't tell anybody anything. And of we waited. And then I get an invitation a year later, I think, to the premiere. So um, uh, we go to my agent and I go to Disneyland. Now I get, I get seasick a little bit. So I got on that ride. And I remember going on that ride before it was the new Star Tours mm -hmm. uh, adventure. And I said, last time I rode this, I got sick. So let's, let's, let's hope for the best. And let's hope we get Leia. Because you don't know who you're going to get. There's right. so many different holograms that come up and talk to the people in the ride. Sure enough, we got Leia. Mm -hmm. And I, the first thing I thought was, oh my God, everyone's going to know it's me. And it doesn't even sound like her. It sounds just like me. And they're going to look at me and go, why did they cast you? So we were with... <laughs> It's an actor's nightmare. We were with my agent's friend who didn't know me that well. And when we got off the ride, he went, you sounded exactly like Leia. And then people in the, when we were in there, people were like, oh my God, is that Carrie Fisher? They were like talking amongst themselves. And I thought, oh, okay, I just got validated as an actor nice, or as a voice nice. actor. Yeah. <clears throat> well, apparently Dave Filoni saw that. And I don't know, five years later, called me and said, uh, hey, I want you to come in and do a little thing for um, Disney. It's a little in-house 
project. So I went in and did a kind of a, a motion capture or performance capture. I wore the helmet and I had to talk to our uh, C3PO and R2D2 and I had to do a scene with them. I think he wanted to see if I could act as opposed to just having the voice. Right. So as soon as I did that, he said, okay, you're going to be coming in for Rebels in a couple of weeks. Oh my God. So okay. I, said to my, I said to my agent, did I just book that job? She said, yeah, I think you did. I think that was probably the audition. Um, so I had to start watching Rebels because, you know, I'm watching horror films and musicals. Right. I'm watching Singing in the Rain and I started watching Rebels. And I thought, you know, this is, this is, this is a game changer. This is huge for me. I need to put in the time as I mm -hmm. would if I was doing an on-camera actor and do research on this character. So I looked up Wikipedia on Princess Leia, Wikipedia on Princess Leia. Um, I watched, my husband and I went on vacation to Hawaii and I brought all six movies with me. There were only six at the time. And I sat in my hotel room and watched them over and over and over. And just to get to know what Padme was like, oh, this is my mom. How, oh, I see where I got my strength from. And oh, mm -hmm. this is the, this is a, a, a Senator Organa who raised me. I, I see where I got, and I worked for him. And I mean, all of this research I had to do and the backstory of who is who and when these things happened, yeah. because the fans know all this stuff. And I didn't know I was even going to associate with fans because I didn't know what conventions were at that time. I didn't even know what cosplay was. Oh, yeah. Um, the only convention I knew was NAM, which is for it's for music. So being mm -hmm. a musician, I've been to NAM. Never been to Comic-Con or any of these conventions. <laughs> and I was told, you're going to know you're going to be going to these. You're going to be oh, really OK. And the fans are going to talk to you. You better know your stuff. And oh, yeah. The, so Disney, um, uh, Lucasfilm, the, the publicity department said, you might want to do a little research because you're going to get a lot of interviews. And I did. I got called like once every other day for an interview and I did my research. And the first couple of interviews, um, the publicity department kind of sat on the other line uh, while we were, I was on the phone with these interviews. And she said, I'm here as a crutch in case you need anything. If you get stuck or they ask you something you don't know or, or, or you can't reveal, I'm right here. They were so great. And then after about five, she said, you, you know what you're doing. You're on your own. Mm -hmm. There you go. So, yeah. And I've been continuing to do them for, for years and started doing the conventions. What a, a whole new family that I belong to in Star Wars. Nice. It's amazing with all. And, and I, so I started watching, you know, more movies and the TV shows and this and that. And so I was able to converse with the, the, um, the people that would come to the, the fans that would come to the convention. And we had a gr you know, great time talking. A lot of times they would bring up stuff that I had no idea what they were talking about. Because <laughs> you know, it's been a couple of years since I did this, but sure, I'll listen to what you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi is doing now. I, I don't know. I wasn't, you know. <laughs> so, but I've done so many events, live events. It's just, it, it's, it's changed my world. It's just changed my life, you know, awesome. voiceover wise, yeah. I got to oh. say, I, I really love the sass you brought to Princess Leia's character in Rebels. So what was it that said, hey, I want to start doing voiceovers? Like, what was it to you that? Um, I, was, I was mainly on camera and, and a dancer. That's what I did. I did dance on TV and film and, and in costume, though, like, like what's behind you. I was in costume. Uh, dancing. Uh, I danced with Eddie Murphy as a pig. Um, I danced with, I was with the basketball guys. I was the big beer barrel. Your Their beers, mascot. yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. The beers, the <laughs> beers. So my, I started doing these, um, I worked at Universal Studios in the children's, like all the children's shows, dancing as an animal. And then I started doing, getting like these little um, Universal home videos and things like that. And, and they were all costume and they said to me hey can you do a little voice over here can you play that flower can you play this so I kept booking voiceover jobs not ever thinking I would have a career in it ever I didn't even it didn't even dawn on me that was a whole other career that you had to do you got to get another agent you got to do a demo and you've got auditions and 
So my sister said, you should probably put a little bit of effort into voiceover. You're booking it anyway. Why don't you just see what happens? No, I don't want to do that. I just got, you know, I'm busy. And I, I thought, all right, I'll give it a shot. So I took a voiceover class thinking I'm going to learn, you know, how to do voiceovers. And basically it was an acting class behind the mic. It was mm. different technique, but it was the same diving into your character and, and, and working from the inside out and what do you want and who are you talking to? And I mean, it was the same stuff. So after I did the, um, the class after four weeks, then you're able to do a voiceover uh, demo with the same teacher. And I went, great. All of a sudden I was in five bands. My bands started working 24 seven. I was learning songs. I was gigging. I was out of town. A year later, I was like, oh, I guess it's time to do my demo. And I've forgotten everything. <laughs> so I went back and, and took the four week class and uh, did my demo. I sent two demos out to two different agents, uh, a really big one that I said, there's no way they're going to bring me in. They don't, who am I? And um, a, a pretty high up agent that a friend of mine recommended. And that's who I signed with coast to coast. And I was with her for 10 years and she became such a good friend and guided my voiceover career. She gave me all this advice and just really got, I got commercials and uh, got Leia several times, several times. And then after about 10 or 15, 10, 11 years, I switched agents, which propelled me to the next level. Awesome. Mm. Um, yeah. So that's how I got started in voiceover. Just sort of step by step by step by step. I just did the work happened. and you just don't know. So, you know, um, oh, go ahead. No, you're fine. Um, when I was younger, um, I was a big fan of the Twilight Zone. Okay. Is that considered science fiction? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. And I also watched Mystery Science Theater. I was oh, a huge fan of that in go. the 90s. Yeah. And so I was able to watch uh, science fiction movies, but through the eyes of improv actors. It's so I, I was nice. able to get the best of both worlds. There you go. <laughs> yeah. But I actually, I actually ended up doing an episode of Twilight Zone back in the 80s. I was when I was playing okay. teenagers. And um, it was a famous episode based on Charles Beaumont, I think, wrote it, um, Dead Man's Shoes was okay. the episode. The episode I did was Dead Woman's Shoes and Helen Mirren was in it and Jeffrey oh, really? Tambor. Oh, so, yeah. So, um, and I just did a movie a couple of years ago that's kind of science fiction-y called Chomping and the Girls. And it, it's sort of science fiction-y with absurdity and, and sure. comedy and fear and scary and mm -hmm. what the heck is that? So, um, yeah. And uh, I was actually up for um, Night of the Comet, which is a mystery or science fiction back in the 80s um that uh Catherine o'hara Catherine, i don't know some famous actress got the part there's a lot of movies that i was up for that somebody else got the part like karate kid and you know um helen hunt and i were up for a lot of parts together and look where they all are <laughs> <laughs> but i get to, i get to do leia so I'm i was gonna say but none of them have gotten to be princess leia so no that's true that's there you true. go so I also noticed that um, you have some video game voice acting credits to your resume, such as Lego Star Wars, Star Wars Uprising, Disney Infinity, all those you did the voice of Leia in, but you also did the Final Fantasy VII remake um, from what I saw as well. Now, my question about all of this is, is your approach for video game acting different than acting for an animated role or is it similar? It's, it's the same. You're, you're, I mean, it, again, technically, um, it's different. Video games, you yell a lot because you're yelling over fire, like, you know, gunfire. Sure. Um, or you're yelling over explosions or something. But as an actor, you, you have to know who you are and, and what your goals are and where you just came from when you come into the room and where you're going and what you want. Um, that is basis that that doesn't change whether it's video whether it's theater i do a lot of theater or used to um when people you could, could go to the theater uh, <clears throat> and when you're doing a feature when you're doing voiceover on camera it's for me it's it's the same muscle it's just different on the outside sure um, okay and for you know for for the video games of leia 
this is interesting. They, um, <laughs> they, the, uh, the first video game I did, uh, I think I, I did Young Leia's voice. I did, you know, from mm -hmm. A New Hope. And then I went in to do another one and I'm sitting in the parking lot and they texted me. I was ready to go into the studio and they said, oh, by the way, you're doing General Leia, not Princess Leia. Oh yeah, no. thought, age difference. <laughs> Whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And I said, ah, what would that, she's, sounds, I, I don't do that voice. And they said, listen to Carrie Fisher's interviews currently. So, you know, I'm in my car going, YouTube, Carrie Fisher, <laughs> her interview. <laughs> and Herbal. I, oh, I tried to match the voice and, you know, she's got a little bit of the little gravelly. Rasp. Yeah. Yeah. So I went in and I did two video games with that voice. I, I did my best, but I listen back to it now and I'm like, there's other actors, actresses that I happen to know that sound like that naturally, that are that could do that. And one of them, two of them actually booked uh, video games doing it. And I went, yeah, they sound great. And then I got called in after Carrie passed away, I got called in to do some of her dialogue on The Last Jedi. Oh. Um, and I went into Disney and I we worked with oh, wow. Ryan Johnson and um, <clears throat> it, it was a little intimidating because I knew I, I had to really reach for that voice and it was only a couple of words and so or a couple of lines and so we did the session and they said great sounds good and then I found out they ended up being able to salvage most of her voice uh, and her dialogue but I think there were a couple of words that they brought somebody else in who sounds just like her at that age. Mm -hmm. so, and I was like, good. Yes. I would have done the same thing. I would have not have used me, but I was very right. grateful that they brought me in for that. That's cool. So, <clears throat> you know, now looking, looking at your website, which by the way, kids is www.juliedolan.com. Um, <laughs> I also noticed that you're a bit of a rock star. So a little bit of a double threat. You know, well, we, if we throw in the dancing, we got a triple threat. <laughs> so we're a dancer, we're we're a rock star, we we're Princess Leia, yeah. and what I count—that's my life. What's that? We, can make, well, that's, that's we can make it a quadruple because we can make it a quadruple threat because she was a, a magician assistant at one point. Well, see, there you go. All right, so quadruple threat. You're just all over the place. This is awesome. <laughs> and I count to be at least four bands that you're in. Uh, it looks like currently four bands. Mm -hmm. Um, so can you tell us about these four different bands and what instrument you play and what's your favorite style of music? What, what's, if you had to pick a style, you know, this is where Julie wants to hang her hat and, and you know, banging that drum or yeah. keyboard all day. Um, I started piano at nine years old in a convent <laughs> being taught by a nun. I'm not kidding. <clears throat> and, uh, I, you know, I've always played piano. I always had a piano. My mom always had a piano for me and I took lessons and, um, and then I just sort of dropped it because I was making a living as a dancer and an actor. And I dated every musician in LA though. So I still had that music connection. And my, speaking of music connection, my brother uh, started a magazine called Music Connection and it's still going to this day. It's one of the most popular music magazines. Okay. <clears throat> so I, um, I started jamming with my brother. He's a drummer. I play piano mm -hmm. and I play harmonica. <clears throat> Whatever's needed, I try to learn it. And we, every week I'd go to his house and we'd put headphones on and he'd have his little electronic drum set and I would have piano and we would play Beatle music. We're huge Beatle fans. Nice. So we played all Beatle music and then we kind of merged into the sixties. We had sheet music, we were harmonizing. We had such a great time. I looked forward to it every week. And then we brought in a guitar player. Hey, we need somebody to do the guitar solo. So we brought in a friend of ours. <laughs> so now there's three of us. And then we did a couple of shows, private parties for people. That started it. And then my brother said, hey, I just saw in Dramalogue, which Dramalogue was the actor's magazine. Um, it's not called Dramalogue anymore. <clears throat> he said, I saw somebody was advertising for an all-female 80s band. They're okay. looking, for a keyboard, looking for a keyboard player. You should audition. And I went, a, I don't know 80s music. I like the 60s. And <laughs> no, I'm scared. <laughs> so I ended up borrowing my brother's keyboard because I didn't have one yet. I didn't have like a, a portable keyboard. And uh, I went to the audition. They, they gave me 
three songs to learn. I think it was a go-go song and a Pat Benatar song and, and uh, the bangles, something like that. Mm -hmm. And I learned, and they gave me a whole list of songs that they wanted to do. I learned like five of them. I was like, oh, I'm going to be, you know, overachiever <laughs> here and, and uh, <laughs> learn five. So I went to the audition, which was at the bass player's house. And there's a drummer, girl drummer, bass player. We didn't have a guitar player yet keyboard player and lead singer. And we started playing the songs. Well, the drummer kept saying, so when are we gonna have beer playing her drums? And I was like, okay, um, why don't we play the songs first? And the bass player was like, what's the chord? What, what, what note are we on? So I was barking out the notes to her. The singer was great. And she and I were kind of keeping the momentum going for this rehearsal. And afterwards, I thought, okay, so my work ethic is different than the musicians. They kind of want to party and they don't do their homework. Being an actor, you, you are trained. Mm -hmm. You are mm -hmm. disciplined. You yep. get your stuff done or you don't work. Right. And I said to the lead singer, listen, thanks so much, but I'm going to pass. Um, it's, this ain't my thing. And she said, how about you and I take over? And we'll find a band. We'll hire, we'll have auditions, and we'll hire, get a bass player. We'll get a guitar player. We'll get a drummer. Not these girls. And I said, "You're on." So we auditioned girls in L.A. over and over and over, and we finally got our core band. We did our first gig. It was all '80s music, and I thought I have found. I've always wanted to be a rock star, and now I've found this new life. I Screw acting, screw dancing. This is it. I'm going to be a rock star. <laughs> and, and, you know, I don't write music at all. I never written a song. Well, one time on Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp, which was a reality show, and I was forced to write a song. Um, but I don't write music. I play other people's music. So it's not like I was a real, not, I don't want to say real musician, but I'm not like a singer songwriter musician okay. looking for a record deal. Sure. I just want to play somebody else's music. You can make a lot of money if you're in tribute bands or if you're in cover bands. If you're in so good ones, yeah. The lead singer and I had a falling out about a year later. And I said, tell you what, I miss playing 60s and 70s music with my brother. You guys do your thing. And it was scary for me to do this because I was giving up something I really loved. Mm -hmm. And I said, you guys go and take the name, take the band and go. And then the lead singer was... Uh, she had a lot of energy and she, uh, I'll just leave it at that. So each Fair band enough. member called me and said, we want to go with you. We, and I said, oh, it's going to look like I'm stealing you. I don't know. No, 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 no. Do, please don't abandon her. So they said, we want to go with you. Okay, I'm going to start from the ground up. So I started a 60s, 70s, 80s classic rock, all female band called the Undercover Girls because we're right. undercover, I, I don't know. That's, <laughs> and we ha have made a living at it for, oh, I don't know, 15 years. That was the very first band that okay. I created from the ground up. And then I started working with some musician friends of mine and we created an In Excess tribute band that's mm -hmm. been going for 15 years. And then I joined a 60s band called Summer of Love. And I fell in love with playing the 60s music. I, mm. I loved dressing up like a hippie. I loved the harmonies. <laughs> nice. I was in that band for about 10 years. And then I was in an Alice Cooper tribute and then a Cheap Trick. And then now I'm in an Aerosmith all-girl tribute. So it just keeps evolving. But if I had one genre, um, I love classic rock, but the 60s is my heart. And um, I'm in a band right now, which not we're not really working, called Charlie's Angels. It's three right. girls and Charlie and Bosley. And we've done maybe two gigs. And we do the music from when the TV show aired, 76 to 81. I don't, I'm not crazy about the music from 76 to 81. You got to really dig deep to find songs that are popular, that everybody likes. That's yeah. not all disco. Although the disco stuff people seem to like. So I'm kind of learning disco and going that sure. this this is good, but disco is hard for keyboards. There's horn sections, there's strings, there's uh, piano, there's electric piano, there's organ. I got two hands, I can only do so much. And um, so, you know, and I'm from this old school of no tracks, everything's live. 
Sure. Mm-hmm. You can't do that. You, even no, even not with that. real bands. No, and even real bands like Def Leppard and you, know, and you go see uh, More and Sticks. more are using backing tracks. Yes, and it's fine. Nobody cares. They want to see no. the show. I was in exactly. a Bon Jovi tribute for years. I love playing Bon Jovi. And they insisted on using some backing tracks just to fill in some of the vocals. Mm-hmm. No, we can do it live. Some of these gang vocals. Shot through the heart. It yeah. sounds like a, you got to have that. People <laughs> right. want to hear that. Right. So I, yeah. So I said, okay, fine. You know? Well, it's either that or you got to take off your boots and start playing with your toes. You know, you don't have so many <laughs> fingers. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so earlier you said something about how you would play whatever was necessary and like you were listing off of several instruments that you do play. But what instrument would you like to learn to play? That saxophone. You saxophone. Saxophone? Because there's a lot of sax. Like when in, in, when we first did the In Excess band, uh, I um, we didn't have a sax player and I had to do all the sax parts on my keyboard mm. and it just didn't sound right. And it's, it's hard to learn all those sax parts to make it sound right. And plus I would have to take my, I had two keyboards. I would have to take my hands off the top keyboard, which was playing nice string pads. And I'd go down to play saxophone and you'd lose a, a, a layer of the music. So we hired a sax player, changed my world because everything became easier and it was the sound was so great and it filled in and it was sexy. And so I, uh, th- there's a lot of music that has sax in it that I didn't realize. Right. Um, uh, uh, even the disco stuff, even Rolling Stones have sax, mm-hmm. a lot of sax. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to learn the sax, but I ended up u- learning harmonica instead, <laughs> which is <laughs> well, nothing hey, like a sax. But <laughs> If you pick up learning the saxophone, you'd be real popular with ska bands too. So, I mean, there's that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I also noticed while looking at your bands uh, that in one of them, the bass player for Undercover Girls is originally from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Yeah. Terry. Which is only like 40 minutes up the road from me. Um, yeah. Really? Yeah. So it, on the the uh, map of Michigan, which is also my hand, I live here. Grand Rapids is just down here. So, yeah. I so, tell her. I'll tell her. Yeah. Um, I mean, I really don't have a question for that. I just thought it was kind of one of those, one of those cool little factoids. I was yeah. going through your website. And I'm like, hey, she's from Michigan. All right. But so I did notice that in your band, I believe it's you guys pronounce it in excessive. In excessive. Yes. All right. So now I wish I listened to the songs that you guys had online. Uh, I'm actually an in excess fan. Oh, so it is scary to me how much the lead singer sounds like Michael Hutchins. Um, I dare to say that if I were to play your guys' songs and tell people that we were listening to NXS, that they would not be able to notice the difference. Mm -hmm. Musically, they're on point. Uh, Vocally, they're on point. Um, You'd be very easy to fool people to make them think that this is NXS and not a cover band. The songs are done that well. So uh, other than me, uh, who's seen a bunch of other cover bands and, and none of them have sounded as good as what I think the NXS sound uh, of your band sounds like. What has the reception by other fans been? The, the fans are, are huge with us. They follow us around and absolutely are have become our friends. Um, we've traveled all over the world doing this. There's actually an inaccessive in australia so we we seem to get calls for them you know it's like no no no, we're not the ones there you need to call them over there unless you want to fly us over that's fine right but we um there's a couple of in excess tributes but not a lot and you'd think we'd work more because we're the only one in this area and we're the only one this side of the united states and um it's just uh, the u.s promoters aren't sure if in excess is going to go over but when they take a chance on us, we do. I mean, it's it's a great following. Um, our, we've had two lead singers, and th- they're both from Australia. And uh, this the one that's currently with us actually had met Michael when he was younger, and he did. Uh, he got called to do a TV show. Uh, it was a, a documentary about Michael Hutchins, and he okay. played Michael. Uh, it's called the last. I think it was called the Last Rock Star, and he played Michael in some of the scenes that were in the studio um they they didn't use his voice 
but they used his moves <clears throat> and they used for some live things uh, that they never got Michael doing, they used him, but he's studied Michael's voice and he naturally sounds like him anyway. Yeah, I, I honestly, um, so the of course, I think on the list of available songs to listen to, I think the first one was New Sensation. Mm -hmm. um, and so that started up and I was like, yeah, exactly. Started doing the head bow. I'm like, like, wow, right? that's, I don't know. I'm like, and he starts right in with the vocals. I was like, holy crap. Did they just like yeah. put Hutchins' voice right into the band? No. It, 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 it was, it was honestly that good. Um, I, I, so please let him know that I was, that from an NXS fan from Michigan uh, was blown away with how good his voice is. You know, so. he's a, a singer songwriter and he has an <laughs> album out and he, uh, works his butt off d writing songs and creating content and he's got a huge fan base he's not science fiction but you know i can put you in contact with him because he'd be really interesting to talk to <laughs> so you're writing it down right now <laughs> i'm ready <laughs> i don't know it off the top of my head no that's fine we can talk afterwards and we'll yeah get yeah, the yeah information yeah. from you but uh no i'd yeah. very much uh be interested in in uh in and learning a little bit more about him, hearing some of his other stuff. Uh, I, I, I wasn't an in excess fan when I first, it's like, I get all these jobs that I'm not fa fans of. And so I have to like do my homework and learn. <laughs> <laughs> but in excess is one of those bands that you listen to the songs and say, I didn't know that was them. <gasps> right, of course yeah. I know this song. There was mm -hmm. a lot of songs. And then some of the songs that I'd never heard that people were requesting us to play. I went, I don't want to learn any more songs. We've got our set. We've got our 90 minute set. That's all we need for <laughs> casinos and festivals. And the lead singer's like, you have no idea some of these great songs that we haven't learned yet and people are requesting them. So I listened to some of these new songs. These guys are great. Oh, and then yeah. when you watch, watch the footage, I watch the footage because I'm watching the, the keyboard player Andrew Ferris to see actually mm -hmm. when he's playing the shakers, when he's actually playing the piano, what he's singing on, because I want to play when he's playing, what he's playing, what he's singing on, if I can. So I'm watching all the concerts. What? Oh my God. I, I watched, I think it was <laughs> Wembley and I felt like I was there and I, I'm mm -hmm. so sorry that I never got to see them when they were yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, uh, um, NXS kick and X were, pretty major in my end of middle school going into high school years and those were were really major albums for that part of my youth but i think my favorite song by them i didn't see it on your on your list but is uh don't change um but that's have, oh of course it's that's what we close with yeah every right. time yeah I, I love that song so well yeah done. oh yeah so. that's there if it's not there i'll have to add it because yeah. that's that's what that's we a, we play an that amazingly every. beautiful song Mm -hmm. so, I'd love to hear. I, I would love to hear his voice on that. Your singer's voice on that song. So uh, I, I probably have live something live. Um, okay. Uh, if it's if it if it's not on the website, I have you know shows that we've done live that that probably have a little bit of that. Okay. Of that. Cool. Um, I did see In Excess uh, a couple of years ago with JD Fortune when he was. Oh yeah, yeah. The Pretty rock Vegas star. and yeah. Yeah, Pretty Vegas. We did that song for a while. I, I love that That's song. That's a great it's a really song. Good song. Yeah, yeah. So. so so, music is a huge part of like any movie you watch, any video game you play, etc. It's like a very influential piece of culture for humans in general. What was your musical influence? And I think you brought this up earlier that made you want to get into music. Other than bit. Lady Madonna at the convent, so right. <laughs> it it was Beatles. Awesome. My Beatles. brother, my brother was a big Beatles fan, and mm -hmm. uh, he's he's much older than I am, but he turned me onto the Beatles and the harmonies. So I kind of grew up singing Beatles songs. So, I thought so they were the only band in the world. You know, you know, as a kid, you're like, oh yeah, I like this band. I like this music. Oh, there's others. And then I started listening to The Who and Tommy. And I was like, oh, nice. You know, read uh, yeah, I got, got into, as an actor, you kind of get into that rock opera and there's a mm -hmm. whole story behind it. Oh, yeah. 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 So That's which times. Beatles song was it for you? Probably one of the early ones um, around the She Loves You, Help. Um, oh, that's that's a then, great era. Then when Sgt. Pepper came out, that was like orchestration and 
harpsichords and much more piano yeah. and uh so that it really started opened expanding up my world. yeah, yeah. Well, i was george martin yeah was george i was martin really then. really big i fluctuate back and forth between rubber soul and revolver as being my top two favorites oh really yeah so those are i listen to those on vinyl quite often so oh nice yeah so um you know, in the in away from the topic of music, but back into some some sci-fi nerdery real quick here. Uh, you know, in the days of yesteryear when we were allowed to, to congregate together, you know, <laughs> back whenever that was. You know, remember yeah. when people used to go to those Comic Con things and enjoyed nerding out yeah. together? <laughs> Ugh, I miss those. I miss I miss Me those too. days. Me so too. now for fans, it was a chance for us to see actors from our beloved movies, TV shows, video games, and have a chance to interact with them. But for you, being the actor on the other side of the coin, what was it that you liked most about Comic Cons? Now you mentioned earlier that you had a chance to you had to go you you realized that you needed to learn your 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 craft and your information about what you were acting with as as Leia and so forth. But what did you like most about the Comic Cons? You're talking as a guest because I did eventually go to Comic Con as just a, a patron and walk around and see everything. Let's ask You're both. <laughs> one as the actor in in the role meeting meeting okay. the fans and then also what do you okay knowing that you went as a as julie yeah you know what did you you know we'll, we'll ask both sides so first as an actor what do you like about about those type of situations or those type of events just seeing um how many fans there are and the family that the closeness that i felt with somebody i'd never met before <clears throat> and um you know, I get a lot of requests for autographs. Uh, they'll email me through my website and mm -hmm. uh, I have a store on, on eBay and just being able to email with these people. And they're like, is this really you? Yeah, it's me. I, I, I'm just, you know, I just did an audition. I'm sitting around. What do you, what do you need? Can I have an autograph? Yeah. Go to my store. Here's what do you, what, what do you want me to say on it? And I mean, it, a lot of times they don't realize they're talking to me and I was like, I'm just a regular person. I'm just, a, you're like the nicest person in there. No, I'm not. I'm just, you know, I'm just normal. But going to these conventions, you actually get to meet these people in person and yeah. you get to take, you know, stand next to them and take a picture and, or take, I bring my lightsaber and I, we do this lightsaber thing. And nice. I, mean, I, I have so much fun with this. And plus walking around, um, seeing all the apps and what they're doing now and and mm -hmm. you know a lot of a lot of i've i'm being a child actor i have a lot of child actor friends so they do all these conventions too but theirs is a little bit different mine's more um star wars based or science fiction or sure. video games anime things like that and uh it, it, and the cosplay like the first time i saw cosplay I was blown away at the detail that these people do. Oh, this yeah. is what they do. Oh, and, they live for it. Uh, yeah. And it's awesome. Um, I remember one guy brought me, this is not cosplay, but this is one of the most exciting moments. And I don't know why. He brought a Darth Vader helmet and wanted me to sign it. Me? You want me to sign your helmet? Yes, of course I'll sign it. That's it was cool. Just the, yeah, I have a picture of me signing it. You know, I have a picture of him, you know, with me <laughs> signing it because it's I'm a fan of that. that right. So cool. Dear so Dad. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so it's just meeting um, and seeing the rush of people and how devoted they are. And um, and this is their life. And yeah. I'm just so proud to be there to, you know, a lot of people would say, I came here just to meet you. Oh my God. I just want to cry when they say that, you know, my heart just bursts. It's, well, I, I gotta, I have to like, people are watching me. I have to watch what I say, watch what I do. You know, you just have to be careful of that stuff. And right. um, so, yeah, uh, it, it, it's just, it's meeting the people. Well, for us, now, this is this is kind of our our form of a comic con. We get to invite people on who who have been in shows that, that we appreciate, and we like watching, and and we liked. And we both we were talking about, hey, who should we try and get on the show? We were honestly both like, we should talk to the lady who does the voice for Princess Leia and Rebel wow. and Rebels. How cool would that be to talk to Princess Leia? And I'm like, yeah, I bet she's got some other cool stuff we got to talk to her about. Yeah, we need to talk to her. Let's go find out who that is. <laughs> find her name. <laughs> And so we found out your name and we're like, okay, we got to talk with Julie. And that's when I started reaching out to you over Twitter is because I, he had, Nick had already seen Rebels a couple of times. I was, and I've told people this and I kind of regret it. I didn't get into Rebels early. 
I saw like the first episode of it and I'm like, oh, this is for kids. It's it's a watered down Star Wars. I don't want to watch it. Truthfully, all Star Wars is for kids, but that's another topic. Um, <laughs> but for big kids too. <laughs> it's, 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 it's for the big, really big kids. Yeah. Um, and I started watching Rebels and because Nick kept telling me, you got to watch Rebels. It's, it gets better. And I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> so I watched it and, I, and then I was like, you know, I get to season four and I'm like, but there's no more rebels and um <laughs> so yeah but yeah so for us this is our our version of comic-con we like to you know have people on that have impacted mm-hmm. us or affected us uh you know and so for us this is very cool to, to sit here and talk with you about your experiences through it and what you've done and and so it's our chance to say thank you for for what you do Ooh. and so we really appreciate it you're welcome <laughs> so so what are some upcoming projects that we can look forward to either music voice that you would like to share with our audience well nobody's really gigging much right now but my all-girl aerosmith band which was formed right before covid um and we've done a couple of like live streaming shows called the ragdolls we are in the process of like learning a whole catalog of music prepping nice. we have a really good manager and he's starting to book for july because casinos are starting to book they built outdoor stages there's a lot of drive-in theater kind of uh yeah. shows but if the vaccine happens and everybody's healthy and things go back to somewhat normal they're start they're going to start doing indoor shows again which that's where i worked a lot i well i did a lot of f- uh, festivals but the casinos is there's so many casinos like Arizona, you can dr- I can drive to Arizona with my gear in the car. They put you up for two nights or one night, you do your show and you drive home. I mean, right. that's what it's like. You're on the road all, a lot. So uh, the Ragdolls is probably what's up and coming for me because I'm really putting a lot of time into learning okay. Aerosmith songs. And I had no idea how many keyboards, how much in there's horns and there's strings and lots of harmonies in. So there's six of us in the band in Aerosmith. I had no idea. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, Final Fantasy, we we didn't talk about that. That came out of nowhere for me. I just auditioned for some lady named Elmira. That did not know what this was because, like again, they don't tell you. Sure. And w- when I got the job, my agent said, "Do you know what this is?" And I said, "No." And she said, "It's Final Fantasy Seven, the remake of Google." Final Fantasy Seven <laughs> remake or Final Fantasy Original Seven, which hadn't been done since I don't know nineteen seventy something or ninety something. Nineties, nineties, mm-hmm. yeah. and it was like all this pixelated little characters and no voices. It was everything was typed. Right. But I saw <laughs> the story. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I saw who Elmira was. Mm-hmm. I saw her daughter Aerith, her stepdaughter. I saw how they met. I. Saw Oh my God, I learned so much by watching this. And then of course, there's Wikipedia on Final Fantasy and Elmira. So when I got to the studio, the director said, now I know this is a big secret, but do you have any idea? Yes, I do. I did my homework last night. I know exactly who I am and what I want and where I'm going and who, you know. So they were very happy about that. And it was an interesting process because they had first done it in Japan with Japanese voiceovers Mm -hmm. and when they brought it here they took out the mouth so she wasn't a lot of times when you're doing um it was dubbing you watch the mouth so you can match the uh for rebels they were creating it off of me it wasn't drawn yet they were they had a camera on me and were watching my moves so they could draw the character this way yeah it was already I was watching the screen uh, and usually I was waiting for the mouth to move. And I go, no, 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 they took out the mouth. So you have to watch her movements. <laughs> when she puts her hands on her hips, that's when you have to say no. So I had to rhythmically, and being a musician <laughs> helped. I had to rhythmically watch how where she was walking and when she said these lines and then be emotional about it. I mean, it was an emotional couple of scenes. It was, it, I had no idea that, that video games could get this emotional. What a oh, yeah. great story. Oh, yeah, my gosh. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm sorry, That's what cool. was your question again? <laughs> no, you did fine. You answered it. Uh, uh, you know, we didn't up. talk about Comic Con, me flipping it around and going oh, right, to right, Comic Con. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, it, it, it's so overwhelming 
but they send you all the materials and the, and the, and the book and the guide and the schedule. And I downloaded the app, which is what you have to do. And I scheduled, oh, I want to see this speaker and I want to go to this convention and I want to go to this person who signs and you schedule everything on your phone and you have to find out, okay, well, where is this room located? Am I going to make it to the next room in time? And then you get there and you have to stand in line. So you, if you're not organized, it, it can be chaotic and it's still chaotic because you walk in and it's the energy and the people and you're kind of squishing through people to try to get to where you need to go. But I had my list of who I needed to see and what, what, where I wanted to go. And if I hadn't had that, um, it would have been too chaotic and overwhelming for me. Oh yeah. It's you get, yeah, they, you yeah. jam, they jam pack them in, which is kind of, kind of cool. Cause there's, <laughs> you know, you can see a lot of cosplay and a lot of fans uh, yeah. all along the way. So, well, this has been cool. Thank you, Julie. Um, this has been a great conversation, a lot of fun. And yeah, we're coming, thank you. We're, we're coming to the end of this here, but before we let you go and we, we sign off here, we have a game that we like to play with every one of our guests. It's a little quiz game. Okay. Okay. So, mm -hmm. Uh, now, if uh, we'll ask you five questions, and if you get three of them right, we're going to send you one of these really cool uh, I gave to the Red Shirt Widows and Orphans coffee mugs, okay? And it also has our, our logo uh, on the backside, the Funny Science okay. Fiction Podcast. Cool. If you get four right, we're going to send you that mug along with this book called Custodians of the Cosmos, which is a sci-fi themed book written by Drayton Allen, which is Nick's dad. And... Um, Nice. Uh, Drayton is the reason why we're here. He started our Facebook group, and our Facebook our Facebook group spawned this podcast. And uh, he host helped host for a little while. And um, but anyway, it's really kind of a cool book. It's it's based upon uh, somebody who wanted to be in Star Trek. Uh, the Federation couldn't quite make it, so he decided to become a custodian on one of the Starfleet ships. Uh, and so <laughs> it, it's about those who boldly go to clean up after those who boldly just went. <laughs> so. Uh, so anyway, and we'll make sure that uh, Drayton puts a little bit of uh, calligraphy in the front of it there for you, okay? Okay, um, thanks. So this quiz is called the Same First Name Quiz. You and... didn't uh, tell her what happens if she doesn't get any right. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I forgot. So there has to be, of course, there's consequences. <laughs> if you get less than three, we take a picture of your face, we make a meme out of you. And we put it in our, we put it in our group. So okay. It's not it's not a steep consequence. It's more of a fun it's a fun sequence. How about that? Fun sequence. We're gonna <laughs> yes. stick with that. We're gonna stick with a fun sequence. That's, like gonna, that. be, that's gonna be part of the part of it from going on, on forward, I think. All right. So this is called so if you're okay with those, we'll we'll proceed with the with the game okay. if you're okay with that. All right, cool. All right, so this is what we call the same first name quiz. I'm going to read you a hint, or Nick and I will read you hints uh interactively. Um and I'll we'll give you a hint based on one person who's an actor and one person who's a musician, and you have to tell us their first name that they have in common, based on the quiz on the on the on the hint. <laughs> what? Okay. 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 It, it okay. Won't, it's it's not it. as hard as it sounds. I promise. Okay. So, uh, and maybe I didn't explain it very well, but yeah. So we'll see. We'll all see right, we're we gonna did. find out. All right, so Nick, you start us off. One was a singer from some Beatles and grew some wings, and the other was a computer with a vision. So what two people have the same first name? One, one person out of the Beatles and this person who played Vision. Um, Paul? Paul, yeah. So Paul McCartney and Paul Bettany. Okay. All right, so, so that's what we're looking for. That You get, a, you get your hint. And we're looking for the the first name. Okay, that one counts, right? <laughs> yes, yes, that was that was one of the five. Absolutely. All right. So, one was Mr. Mom and became a bat in the night. The other was from down under and wanted a new sensation. Michael. Michael. All right. So Michael Keaton and Michael, Michael Hutchins. Hutchins. And Michael. Yeah. All right. One was an Iron Patriot who hung with Stark. And the other drove his Chevy to a very dry levee. Don? Don, yes. Yeah. Why, yeah. Did, so you Don, why did you hesitate? Because I thought you said John for a second. Oh, no, Don. Don McLean. Yeah, yeah Don McLean, Don and, Shield. Yep. 
Well, I knew one of those. Yeah, and the so, other is Don <laughs> Chedley. Is it Chedley or Shield? Is it Chedley? I don't know. You don't even know. No, we're gonna. Well, that's the problem. If we ever have Don on the on the show, we're gonna have to learn how to pronounce his name. Um. All right. So. All right. So if we if you don't get this, this next one, we can't have you on. We can't air your episode. All right. So. <laughs> but you're three for three. You've gotten yourself a mug. One Yay. played a princess in a galaxy far, far away, and the other asked for Jesus to take the wheel. Uh, Jewel, Lee, Jewel. Oh, let me. Let me... <laughs> Wait. I'll, I'll read. I'll reread you the hint. Yeah. One played a princess in a galaxy far, far away. A princess. Yes. And the other asked Jesus to take the wheel. So, what was the actress and? And musician's first name. Oh, oh, right, musician, right. Uh, uh, Carrie. Carrie, yeah. Yes. So Carrie Fisher and Carrie Underwood. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I was I like, gotcha. oh no, did she just no. say Jewel? <laughs> well, I was thinking Jewel. Uh, I, was, I don't know why Jewel popped up, but it's funny because I know. Well, I'm not gonna. Uh, okay, I know uh, one of these. Like, I didn't know Carrie Underwood. I knew I've heard that before, but I'm not. I don't follow Carrie Underwood so I didn't know the guy no with the vision I was lucky to get Paul as soon as you said wings I was like oh it's probably Paul because it's wings what's the question you know what I mean it's like your mind <laughs> would just start trying to anyway one more to go one more to go, one one more to go. so you got, you got right. your book you got your mug yeah. and you got your book this one's just our funsies now yeah all so, the pressure's off one played a senator from Alderaan the other played the guitar on the stairway to heaven Jim, Jimmy, Jim? Jimmy, yeah, Jimmy yep. Smith and Jimmy Page. Jimmy Page, yeah. All right, so five for five, and you were all nervous. You see how good you did. <laughs> well, it's you know, it's it's when you have to recall that, like now, <laughs> like I'm thinking, okay, Bail Organis, who played, who played my dad? Okay, I'm thinking Robert Plant. No, he's the lead singer. Who's Jimmy Page? Okay, so it's like your mind just. <laughs> kind of blocks all that stuff of course i know jimmy pages and jimmy smith you know what i mean it's right it's just funny when you're put on the spot that's when you, i'm sure yeah so, everything yeah, so, goes right so five for five so when we're all done here don't hang up right away we we uh i'll need to get your shipping address and we'll make sure we get those out to you okay yeah thank you thank all right you. julie thank you so much for being on the show today where can people go to find out more about your work my Instagram, which I've created a 13 episode travel vlog, because when I traveled a lot, I found all these little tips and tricks. Oh, and cool. I tried to make it funny, like a two minute little video of don't do this because it won't work. Or, <laughs> you know, this is a little trick on how to get out of a parking ticket, things like that. And uh, that's Julie M as in Marie, my middle name, Julie M Dolan at Instagram. And it's on Instagram TV. Okay. Um, Twitter, Twitter is just call me Leia. Mm-hmm. And my Facebook is Julie Dolan Actress. Okay, cool. Yeah. Awesome. We will be sure to put those descriptions so that people can find them in the links below. Thank All you. Right. Now, remember, guys, that subscribing is the single most important thing you can do. It ensures that we get more amazing guests like Julie and these funny moments for you to listen to. Please subscribe. It helps more than you know. And go and check out Julie on Twitter and Instagram. You're not going to be sorry that you did. I follow her on Twitter. I have a lot of fun with it. I didn't know she had an Instagram account until just now, and I'll be following that here shortly. <laughs> and remember, that sounds stalkerish, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I meant that in a completely non-stalkery way. So uh, there's that. All right. But remember, if you're not happy with the content of our videos, all you have to do is submit in triplicate, of course, to our complaint department and that will be processed by the cats from Lothal and, and don't worry they take those complaints very seriously and they get to them all right meow well thanks again Julie we truly appreciate you being on the show today thank yeah. you I had such a good time you guys are awesome oh thank you Julie thank you so much all right goodbye everybody thanks for watching bye our show is brought to you by our charity sponsor the Red Shirt Widows and Orphans Fund which supports the Wish Upon a Teen Foundation that helps out sick kids when they need it most. And just imagine the comfort you'll give Redshirt Crewman number 87 
he'll know that when he puts on the red shirt and gets electrocuted on the stage of Josie and the Pussycats six minutes into the second set, that he didn't leave his family destitute and without hope. Because the red shirt Widows and Orphans Fund has his back and his guitar pick. On behalf of the rest of the hosts of Funny Science Fiction, we'd like to thank you for listening to this episode. If you'd like to be a guest on one of our future episodes, please contact us by means of our Facebook group, Funny Science Fiction. You can find us on Twitter or Instagram using the handle at Funny Sci-Fi, or you can go to DraytonAllen.com and click the contact me link at the bottom of the page. Thanks again. Hope you enjoyed the episode. <laughs>